congratulations on your new book, Anxious Children in an Anxious World, uh, Facing Fear and Finding Brave. You've certainly kept this one quiet. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure all of the parents who value your kindness and insight would be very happy to have your new book on our bookshelves as well. Oh, thank you, Sharon. The first thing I want to ask you about this new book is why the name and why the cover? Oh, there's there's a reason behind both of those. Um, first of all, the name, Jar, I laughed to myself. Do you remember after I wrote the first book, for anybody who might not know the title of the first book, <laughs> Perfectly Imperfect Parenting, Connection Not Perfection. It is a mouthful. mouthful. <laughs> and I did I loved the title. I loved it until I had to go on radio interviews and talk about it. And I found even the people interviewing me just couldn't say the title. And I remember saying to you, Jeez. if I ever write another book, it's going to be real short, real snappy. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> and I just had to. I don't I have too much going on in my brain, I think. So the anxious children in anxious world was really important to me. Because I think sometimes when your child is struggling with anxiety, you focus everything on that child. So you're not looking at anything around them. Everything is about that child. But children live within the family. They live within the home. They live with parents. And it's just so important to look at the world around them and um, their friends, their family, whatever it might be, their school, more than just focus on that child. So I really wanted to get that across. But then facing fears and finding brave is because we sometimes, if you have, and I have a child who struggles at times with anxiety, and I think we look at this child and we think, oh, you know, this is really impacting on their life and you know, this is something that they're going to have to, a cross to bear nearly for the rest of their lives. And I thought, no, that's not the way it works. You know, we can do so much to support these children. And what we really want them to do is to know they have it within them to face their fears and find the brave. Funny, Jer, sometimes I give talks to secondary school students about anxiety, their brains, their bodies and what's going on. And I often say to them, you know, if you, if you relate to what I'm saying, so if you've struggled with anxiety and you know what I'm talking about, you think, oh, but I'm not brave. You know, definitely not. But you are the ones who are brave every day. For some kids, getting out of bed in the morning, going into school is brave. So they have all this bravery within them. It's just letting them see it's in there and encouraging it out of them is what I wanted to, to get across with it. Absolutely. And why the cover? Because the cover is so, it's oh. a stunning cover and the colours just pop. But the imagery is really, really poignant. I am so happy with the cover. I love the cover. Um, this was a vision I had in my head. And myself and Erin, my eldest, sat here one night. And I said to her, I know what I want on the cover. and But I, I don't know what it is. And she just literally got a pad and paper. I said, okay, tell me what you want. And there's, there's a reason behind it all. And when I think of myself as a parent, from, from the time Erin, my eldest, was born, so, and I talked about this and the other one about the need to be perfect. So she came along and you love this baby so much and you want to protect them and take care of them. And I mean, that's really good. And I always saw myself as the umbrella. You know, I'm this umbrella, I'm over her, I'm keeping her safe, I'm protecting her. And there are times when you have to do that. I mean, there's times that's really important, but we don't always want to be the umbrella. The wellies are saying yes be the umbrella like support your child but more often instead of being the umbrella we want them to put on their wellies and get out there and dance in the rain and know that they are, can do it themselves we want them to be strong and capable and that's really what i was trying to get across so i hope it kind of i kind of feel i have to explain it but i i hope it comes across in the picture that that's what i wanted it absolutely does i mean i think as a parent myself i I feel those same sentiments that you just want to protect your children, put them in a little bubble wrap and, yeah. and you know, send them off in the world. But it doesn't work like that. They have to make their own mistakes. They have yeah. to find their own brave. Yeah. You know, they really do. Um, and I think that's, that's an important aspect that you do discuss in the book as well about um, giving, ourselves, or giving our children that autonomy yes. to understand what they're experiencing in their world because yeah. we are not living their lives 
and so I think that's really really valid and I think the the cover and the cover definitely will speak to a lot of parents because how many times do we say don't splash in, don't walk in that puddle yeah. <laughs> don't walk in, you're splashing everywhere you're, oh my god your shoes your socks <laughs> but look there's nothing wrong with yeah. it that's um, it and that's that's it so it's a good encouragement for us to recognize that we are their support but they are their own support at times as well yeah that's exactly it um, and I think you know Mary you have this is your second book in three years is this your second book yes. in three years so that is a that is a huge testament to you and your understanding of what parents need in in this type of, of world that we're living in but writing a book is a daunting experience especially mm-hmm. when you're balancing that with a work life and a family life um, and probably no social life when <laughs> it comes to writing a book let's face it but I do think that I speak for all of us Mary O'Kane fans when I say thank you for writing this this book and this particular aspect of parenthood because anxiety is so prevalent in in this world at, at this time and um, I know that for me perfectly imperfect parenting was in some ways a saving grace to my level of parenting and to all of us who needed that reassurance that's offered by your insight and your guidance um, and that overall theme of being a good enough parent. Um, so having written that book already, Perfectly Imperfect Parenting, and moved on to anxious children in an anxious world, why for you was it so important to write a book about childhood anxiety? Oh, this is a big one for me, Ger, because obviously there's the professional side of me who I've always been interested I mean, I lecture in everything to do with well-being and you know that that's my area and um, you know the social and emotional development and that's very much what perfectly imperfect parenting was about but on this personal level as well anxiety was impacting my home and I know what it feels like to be that parent who is so worried about your child. I have lain in bed at four in the morning, going over and over, worrying about my child, and I knew what that felt like. And you know, I think I remember there's this um saying, you see it posted on social media every so often, and I really struggle with it. And I know it's meant well, but it's this thing of uh, good mothers have messy kitchens, but happy children. And I remember reading that one day and thinking, Oh my gosh, I'm such a bad mother because one of my children is really, really struggling. They're not happy. And whose fault is that? It's me. I'm the bad mother. And I think so many parents, mums and dads, grandmothers, your know, family members who have a child who's struggling in whatever way it is, we reflect it back on ourselves. We blame ourselves and we think, what have I done wrong to cause this? And I have spent a decade more researching anxiety, reading about it, but I wanted to to put out a book in a way that no mother or father would ever read this book and feel the way I felt when I read that saying, because there is so much that we can do in the lives of our children. It helped me organize all my own thoughts, like just putting it all down in paper and was really good for me, myself, in organizing my thoughts. But I wanted something for parents that I'm quite practical. I wanted them to be able to read something, not feel bad about themselves. I wanted to empower them and say, yes, your child might be struggling at the moment. But you know what? There is so much you can do and you have it in you to do it. It's not your rocket science. Let's break it down really clearly. There's stuff we can do. So I really wanted to empower them. But then as well, sort of with my professional hat on, After I finished the first book, I'm giving talks for parents every week, week in, week out. So many parents came back to me after the first one. And I'd written one chapter on anxiety and said, you know, give us more. And I was doing webinars and it's two hours. And two hours is great. You can sit with somebody and you explain the brain development, whatever. But it's not enough. I wanted something really broad, something I could cover not only the anxious children in the anxious world, 
but that they think they're binding brave. That binding brave bit is so important. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna write a book. I'd never believed after the first one, but yeah. For, for my sins, I started again. And I'm, I have to be honest, I'm proud of it. I keep saying to people, um, this is a book I wish I had read when mine were little. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to write something for me when I was younger, with when my children were younger and I think things I've learned about my parenting that maybe I would have changed. Uh, yeah, I completely understand that. I have a 10 and a six year old and I feel that you know, we've had instances of anxious thoughts and, and you know, we're trying to manage those at such a young age. Um, but I feel a lot more empowered having read your book and gone through all of the insights and practicalities that you offer. So I feel like I'm prepared in some ways for what may happen in the teenage years um, and before. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm glad to hear that you feel empowered by it. That, that is really what I wanted. So before we talk about the inside of the book, let's have a look at what some of the reviewers have said. Hey, it's Dave Moore from Today FM and I just want to wish Mary the best of luck with the absolutely brilliant book that you've written, Mary, Anxious Children in an Anxious World. It'll help so many families, so many kids and so many parents. So congratulations on it so far and best of luck with the launch. Anton Savage writes in the foreword for Anxious Children in an Anxious World. The challenge for any parenting advisor is to walk the delicate tightrope of empathy and practicality, of sympathy and science. And Mary does it beautifully. Her advice, whether given in the pages of her books, one-to-one, -one, or over the airwaves on shows like mine, always starts in the same place. Genuine, heartfelt empathy for the child and the parent. And I think that sums up one of the key takeaways from this particular book. And that is the fact that you explore the idea that there is an important role that adults play in supporting a child who has anxious thoughts. Absolutely, Claire. That's huge for me. In psychology, we're always talking about the role of one good adult. And I mean, I'm always saying not one perfect adult. You don't have to have all the answers one good adult every child needs somebody somebody in their life who just loves them believes in them and wants their best interests at heart and i tried to get that across i think anxiety is very disempowering for children um, or anybody experiencing it but it's very disempowering for parents and i think sometimes parents don't realize the important role they play and as I said, it's not that they have to have all the answers. You know, as in psychology or education, we talk about, oh, the role of one good adult, this is so important. And I talk in the book about the My World 2 survey. So this was adolescents and young adults, and they asked them, okay, tell us about your world, you know, my world, but tell us about your mental health, tell us about your well-being. And one of the things they came back and said was, 
having somebody there. But we've, we've always claimed this, and it was so good to have them say it back. And again, it wasn't that you have to, whether you're a parent, a grandparent, whether you're an educator, whether you're an aunt, an older brother, you don't have to have all the answers. You just have to have this understanding and be the port in the storm. And I, I really believe that's what it is. Absolutely. And I think you know that's just one highlight that I've picked out from the book and, and there's so many um with you know the accessible knowledge and the practical guidelines that you offer us. Um, you know, you explore what psychology teaches, you explore the research, um, and you guide us through all of that in such a, a, a gentle and honest way. And with that, one of the things that you discuss that gives us uh, quite a lot of reassurance, I'll be honest, is the idea that anxiety is felt on spectrum. Yeah, absolutely. And we all feel it. You know, we all do. I mean, I think of myself, different things in my life, every adult, anybody who says, no, 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 I never feel anxious. Have you ever given a best man speech? What were you like before you did your driving test? Were you in college? Did you do exams? Hmm, leaving cert. Those leaving cert <laughs> dreams that we all still have. You know, we've all been there. We've absolutely been there. And it's important to normalize it. That everybody experiences anxiety. And remember, and I talk about it in the book, it's important for children to understand anxiety comes from a good place. You know, if you're a child and you are feeling anxious, it's all these physical feelings in your body and you're thinking, this feels awful. But if you actually understand your brain development, and I'm not just talking the teenagers, I'm talking the little ones. You know, my students are, well, some of them are psychology students, but some of them are early ed, so dealing with preschoolers, they're explaining in really simple terms, it's in here, you can do it, to little ones, what's happening in your brain? And suddenly they realize, oh my gosh, anxiety is like this little alarm inside me trying to keep me safe. And if you really talk to them about what's going on, it's empowering for them and you're normalizing it. They're real there's not something wrong with your child because they're struggling with anxiety. You know, they're just caught in this cycle but we can really support them. That one good adult, whoever they are, can support them to move away from that. And we can keep coming back to it, but find that inner brave that they have within them. Yes, finding brave. And that is a really important aspect of, the, of this book. Um, and it's something that I really, really love about it because it's not just about supporting our children, it's helping them to overcome certain scenarios and find their brave as you say and in um, the book you actually have a line that is really important um, you say we cannot promise they will never face challenging situations but we can let them see our faith in their ability to cope can you talk to me a little bit about this? oh see this is what i mean Jer, about in the anxious world it comes back to us and when I say that, I'd hate a parent or a carer to listen and hear me say that and think, oh, does she mean you know, I'm responsible? I don't mean that. But it's so important to look at ourselves. And can I tell you this story? Okay, I first heard this story told by Dr. David Coleman. Okay, I'm sure most people listening will know who David Coleman is. And I was listening to him give a talk and he told this story and it comes from a book. Um, by a man called Lawrence Cohen, The Opposite of Worry. And in this book, Lawrence Cohen tells a story about chickens, okay? Mm, I, I, I tell this story a lot, but I love this story. So, Lawrence Cohen was in high school, and he was doing this project with chickens. And in the bit book, I talk about fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, okay? And if you give chickens a fright, give them a shock, they go into a state of what we call tonic immobilization. Now, I'm saying this and I'm thinking, there's probably a chicken farmer listening to this, <laughs> thinking, you fell for the old chicken story, Mary. I believe that this is what they do, okay? This is what Lawrence Cohen claims. So, he did this project with chickens. So he put these chickens in a pen and he gave them a fright. So he pops a chicken in, gives the chicken a fright. And it goes into this state of tonic mobilization. It's like, you know the way in America, they talk about playing possum, it's like playing dead. They go into that state. And he timed how long they went into that state for. So if he gave them a fright, they went into that state for between one and two minutes, okay? So that, okay, that's fine. This is what happens to chickens when they get a fright. So then he tried another approach. So he gives the first chicken a fright, okay? It goes into a state of tonic mobilization. Then he just gets another chicken, pops it in the pen, doesn't give it a fright, 
but it sees the first chicken frozen. So what does the second chicken do? Uh, it thinks, well, he obviously knows something I don't know. There's something really bad going to happen. And it freezes and it goes into a state of atomic normalization and he times them and they, on average, froze for five minutes. Well, I, why talk about chickens? Lawrence Cohn relates it to parents, okay? And I heard this story and I thought, ooh, the moral of the story is, think about how you respond to your child's anxiety. Are you the second chicken? Now, very often when, when you hear psychologists talking about children with anxiety and they kind of go, oh, you, to mum or dad, oh, do you get a bit anxious then, do you? And I've had have that said, you know, my husband is very laid back. So people look at me and go, oh yeah, I wonder where she got that from. And you think, uh, thank you, that really helps me. So when I heard the story, I thought, I'm not a second chicken. No, I'm definitely not a second chicken, but I don't parent in that anxious a way. Then I stopped and I thought, I parent, as we all do, I parent my three children differently. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this? So the other two, and mine are older, and they might say, you know, I'm, oh, I want to go here, mum, or I'm going there, and I'm like, yay, off you go. But my child who struggles with anxiety will say that, and I'll go, oh, would you like a lift, pet? Would I, would I pick you up? So my anxiety is, is sneaking up on me, and I become the second chicken. And I heard that story, and it just hit me, and I thought, that's me. I am doing this. So in order for them to find their inner brave, we have to find ours. We have to look inside ourselves. I really think when what they need from us when they're feeling anxious, obviously empathy. You know, any child who's struggling, empathy is first. But they also need to see that we have confidence in them. They need to see that while they're finding that bravery that we know they have within them, that we're there, you know, I'm here for you, but that we believe in them. It's really funny, Chair. I think if you don't struggle with anxiety, it can be difficult sometimes. You, you, your child tells you they're frightened of something and you're, you, you're tempted to go, don't be ridiculous, it'll be grand. Why are you worried about going into school? You love school, mm. you love teacher. And they're thinking, ah, and we forget what it feels like. I'm scared of heights. I kind of talk, come back to that through the book every so often. <laughs> because it helps me to remember what that feels like. I have a memory of being up at the Giants Causeway and there was this cliff walk, you know, cliff walks send the fear of God into me with my children. And I mean, I'm, I'm not near the cliff, but I'm terrified to see them. And I go into that state of fight or flight. And sometimes as a parent to remember that, but funny, at any time, you know, I think, are, are, are we really making a difference in our child's life? Like, if we do this, do we make a difference? My daughter turned it around on me. Right. And we went to Tato Park. I'll never forget this one time. So she's used to me saying to her, oh, you know, be brave. You know, you can do it. Be brave. And I'm frightened to fight. Yeah. You know that walkie thing? They put a hook on your back <laughs> yeah. and you walk on the wooden things. <laughs> well, she went, oh, Mom, will you come on this with me? And I'm like, Oh no, I, I couldn't do that. She's like, mm, be brave, mum. Find your inner brave. And I thought, I can never, I can never say it to her again if I don't do it. Sure. So she loves that sort of thing. She went backwards along with I went, oh, these on the lowest level. She's scooting along backwards. And I'm like, uh, and she's leading me along. Fantastic. But she turned the tables on me. And she did exactly what I would do with her. And she got me across that skywalk or whatever you call it and at the end of it I mean, I felt so proud of what I've done and it really made me experience what she has experienced so I often think you know we we want them to push outside the comfort zone we want them to find their inner brave it's so important that we do it too we we need to put our money where our mouth is I'm not going back to Tato Park any day <laughs> soon but, or Emerald Park or whatever it's called but we do and, but it also reminded me, it works. Mm. You know, it really does work. The confidence you feel when you actually face that fear is phenomenal. That was quite a big life lesson for both of you. Oh, yes. Mm. It really, really, it was actually lovely having the tables turned. Yeah. Really lovely. And that's I mean, the connection again. What? All about connection. connection. Yeah. <laughs>
So let's have a look at what some of the other reviewers are saying about anxious children in an anxious world. Mary, huge congratulations on your book and best of luck with your launch. I loved your book, Anxious Children in an Anxious World. I love the line though, facing fears and finding brave because anxious children, they are so brave and they do face their fears each and every day. And it's really difficult for people who actually don't understand the enormity and how debilitating it can be for children to do everyday tasks and as they look around and feel, why can't I do this? This is such a wonderful tool for parents, caregivers, teachers to kind of have tools in the moment, because we need those, and to have an understanding of the mechanics of anxiety so that the behaviours make sense. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. Congratulations um, on your launch and I'm recommending it to everybody. Um, anyone born after 1995? was effectively born with a device in their hands um, and it easily disconnects them from reality. And since the 2000s, mental health has surged with anxiety being immensely prevalent. Children and teenagers are growing up with smartphone anxiety, eco-anxiety, exam pressures and a completely distorted view of themselves with unattainable goals. Anxious children in an anxious world offers so much guidance on exploring anxiety for parents and for children. So could you tell us a little bit about the thinking within this book? Well, I think exactly what you said, Claire. I mean, my awareness of that has sort of fed into the book. And in fact, one of the chapters I go through the different types of anxiety and I have a few Ask the Expert sections. You mentioned eco-anxiety for a moment, I have another on phobias selective mutism, these different types of anxieties that are becoming more common. The, the figure I always go back to, and I have, I have some international research in the book, but the one that is stuck in my brain um, is a piece of Irish, Irish research by Mary Cannon. And she found by the age of 13, one in three of our children have struggled with some mental health difficulty, but anxiety was the most common. By the age of 24, half of them and I always go back to that the one in three in particular hits me because as a parent of three I think well I'm living the dream I and mean, this is my family um, and it just reminds you how common anxiety is you know it is everywhere and I think it does parents and children and teenagers no harm to know that I think very often if you're a child or a teen dealing with anxiety you think it's you you think this is my experience, you know, nobody else understands, nobody else gets this. I think of kids sitting in classrooms. And again, if I'm talking to teenagers in a classroom, so I think think one in three. You look around your classroom, you are not on your own. There are classmates that are going through this and it might be the captain of the football team. It might be the little bright spark, the brainy box that you think knows everything. It might be the most popular girl in your class, but you think you're on your own, but you're not. There are so many children and teenagers living with it. But I think the important thing for us 
as parents or carers is to go back to what we can do. And I think probably there's three steps, if you like. I mean, I've, the book is quite broad, but in the middle of it, I talk about so three areas. And the first is what we call psychoeducation, and that's understanding it. You know, as I said earlier, anxiety is completely disempowering. So explaining it from preschoolers right up to teenagers in simple ways, and I talk about it at different levels, where they understand their brain. They understand the impact the brain has on their body. They understand the traps they fall into, because we all do it. To me, you have to start with that. You really have to start with that. Then self-regulation. What do I do when it happens? Understanding it isn't going to make it go away. I mean, to be honest, Chair, reading this book, I can't promise parents, read this book, your child's anxiety will mysteriously go away. No, it won't. You know, that's actually not the goal. The goal is to have helpful ways of dealing with it. This is the dancing in the rain. You know, we can't do it for them. So there's a big piece on self-regulation because you have to support your child to find the way that works for them. And I outline lots of different ways in the book, but one of the things I would come back to is it's what works for your child and what works for your family. That's, you know, there's not one perfect way of dealing with this. No, 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 no. It's what works for you. But they have to, we have to teach them what to do when they're feeling that way. And then when they have the skills to actually, the coping skills to deal with the anxiety, that's when we just gently push them outside the comfort zone and not you know, throw them in the deep end. You know, I never knew that saying is genuinely about throwing people in the deep end of a pool. <laughs> Somebody told me that and I'm like, what? That will result, result in flooding, that's not good. No, we're not going there. But when they have those skills, then it's, it's baby steps, baby steps out of their comfort zone. And, and this is stuff we can all do. And funny, Jer, somebody was saying to me the other day, I wouldn't say, she said, I wouldn't say my child is really struggling with anxiety, but I have a real sensitive little child. Do you think this book would be helpful? And I'm like, yes, read it now. It's for every parent. If your child is sensitive, you know, this is going to build on their capability. This is what we want to do. You, know, you don't have to wait until a child is struggling to read the book. You know, if you catch it early, all the better, absolutely. Funny, there was, I often think, we're thinking about pushing them outside the comfort zone. Early ed, play, it's play, play, play. Always come back to play. And even with teenagers, you can be playful. It's not just for the little ones, but there was a phenomenal piece of research from the University of Exeter that took place after COVID. And it looked at, there were, there were settings across Ireland and the UK. I know there was one in Dublin, one in Belfast. I think there was one in Scotland and, and across England and Wales. And they were talking to parents about their attitude towards adventurous play and their attitudes toward, towards risk taking, okay? So they were asking parents, tell us how you feel about this. And they were talking about the ways in which their children played, little ones right up. And then they asked them, so how did your children cope during lockdown, during the COVID experience? The children whose parents believed in adventurous play, who pushed them out of their comfort zones, they coped better. Wow. And think about it, they were experiencing anxiety. You know, if I'm, if I'm swinging really high on a swing, if, I, if I'm going on my bike and my dad's going, oh, go on, you can go faster, you can do it. What happens when I go faster? I start to think, oh my gosh, I'm not sure about this. My heart starts to pound a little and I'm feeling a little bit shaky and my, my breathing changes and I'm experiencing anxiety in play. And I'm realizing this is a little bit scary, but you know what? I can do this. So I, I think it's really important that we, we don't just stop with self-regulation. No, we move on. For, it's resilience, isn't it? It's you know finding that strength within them, that, capability and again see I keep saying it comes back to looking at us but it does you know to I should say as well Jer, I'm a wuss like I'm sitting here as if <laughs> if my husband is watching this he'll be going yeah Mary tell us about your risk taking and your attitude to risk I have to push myself it doesn't come naturally to me so I have to be aware of my own inner feelings of protectiveness and make sure it doesn't turn into over 
protectiveness to try and push them to be independent and whatever. But believe me, if I have it in me to do it, everybody else has, definitely. What's almighty here? There is so much involved in anxious children in an anxious world. You cover quite a lot of different topics without being overburdening or overwhelming for the person reading the book. Um, some of the, I'm just looking at the table of contents here and some of the ideas that you explore are the likes of children's social and emotional development, the impact of anxiety, finding calm, facing fears, changing patterns, resilience and risk and the wider picture of our connections including that one good adult and you also revisit that topic of perfection. Um, so I do want to say thank you Mary for exploring these ideas with us in anxious children in an anxious world with us today and within the book and I do I wish you every success with this new 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 book and um, which you can purchase through buythebook.ie um, and I know it's going to be of huge value to your readers and um, the last thing I want to ask you is that age-old question of what is next for Mary O'Kane? Now, I said this last time, didn't I? I'm never writing another book again. <laughs> I did. I said that last time and I ended up writing this one. But no, I, my plans are not to write another book at the moment. Um, but I do have a little secret mission on the go. Um, I, in this book, I'm saying to parents, you need to find your inner brave. If you want to help your child find theirs, you have to find your inner brave. Um, so I am currently talking about doing something that is very much pushing me outside my comfort zone. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to say what it is exactly because it's all, it's all in Push discussions. And yes, at the moment. And I keep saying, wait till the book is after the back, after the book, after the book. But I'm hoping over the summer, um, I am doing something which I think is really exciting. Something that 18 year old me would never have dreamed I would ever do. Um, it might be a disaster. No, oh. but, but I'm going to find my inner brave and I'm going to give something um, new. It's something in the media, but a try. And I'm going to go for it. And if I fall flat on my face, none of you will hear another word about it. <laughs> But no, I, it's something I'm really excited about. So, so that's my plan. And then back to my students in September again, because my students will be all winding up for the summer. So, 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 but no more books for the moment. Concentrate on this one for the time for the being. Moment. Mm. <laughs> and before we go, can I just say something, Cher? And that is thank you so much to you. You are, you're just phenomenal. I, I've said my acknowledgements. You have no idea how good you are at what you do. <laughs> I'm funny, I should say to people, so I did the first book and oh, I must tell my students this actually. So I did the first book and I remember giving it to you and thinking, oh, here I am. My book is finished. There you go, Ger, you edit it. Imagine me like little, a few minor typos, Mary, you know, and I remember you saying to me, oh, I want, want to hear your inner voice. I want to hear your, your and you making me really stop and really challenging my thinking. I say to my students with every assignment, the mark isn't important. It's the feedback listen to the feedback the feedback is how you grow it's how you learn it's how you change did i do it myself no i didn't i did the same with this book i thought yay it's finished i know what i'm doing this time sent it to you you're like no 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 mary i want you to rethink but i want to hear your voice but you are phenomenal at what you do and you help help me so much and i really really do appreciate it so thank you very much to you oh mary you're an absolute delight to work with honestly i think we work very well together mm -hmm. because i understand you and i understand your message and i feel that we work so well together that to bring that message out uh, you explore it so well at the end of the day mary this is your book you have created it um, and I've just been a little stepping stone along the way. But this is all, your, all you and all yours. Oh, thank you so much, Cher. And congratulations again. And just a reminder that buythebook.ie is where you can pre-order and order the book. Um, it just, it's available for... Today, 8th of April. I've been waiting for the 8th of April. <laughs> Official launch date. So yes, Load of them went out in the post this morning, yeah, so I'm hoping people sense. might even have them tomorrow. So yeah, and if you do have a copy of the book, please do write a review and let Mary know how you're getting on with the book and what you think of it. And because that, like we say, is that feedback is invaluable. Uh, when we write books, we, we tend to write them in isolation. Yeah. So when we hear and understand what our readers are getting from 
our books that we create, it is of huge value and importance to the author. I'd also like to thank four other people who made contributions to the book in my little Ask the Expert pieces, and I was so grateful for their contributions. So the first one is Alex Coster, ecotherapist, author of Roots and Wings, who did a lovely little piece on ecotherapy for me. We have Dr. Niall Neeson, the calming dentist um, from Boyne Dental, did a lovely little piece in the phobias section. Then we have Lucy Nathanson, who did a piece in the selective mutism section, and she uh, can be found at competentchildren.co.uk. And last but definitely not least, the wonderful Louise Shanaher from Creative Mindful Kids, who I'm always recommending her Mindfully Me and Kindfully Me books, um, who did a little piece for me in the mindfulness section. So thank you to all four of them. I really appreciate your expert opinion. When we're self-publishing, we don't work in isolation. Um, and the great thing is you've had a wonderful team around you as you've gotten anxious children in an anxious world off the ground. So let's have a look at a few words from Rachel Drury from buythebook.ie and Jeremy Murphy from JM Agency. Mary, congratulations on the publication of your wonderful book and best of luck tonight for your book launch. It's been an absolute pleasure working with you on buythebook.ie to sell your book this year. I wish you nothing but the best of success with this book and I know it will help so many people. For anyone watching tonight, if you haven't got your copy already, I would really encourage you to buy it tonight or this week. In doing so, it gives Mary a really good opportunity of making the bestseller list in Ireland and it couldn't go to a more deserving person. So if you haven't got your copy, I would really encourage you to do so and support Mary. And I know this book will help so many people. So well done again, Mary. Best of luck for tonight. I look forward to catching up with you soon. Take care. Hello, everyone uh, from a very sunny uh, County Kerry. My name is Jeremy and my business, JM Agency, did the design and publishing of this book. It's called Anxious Children in an Anxious World by Dr. Mary O'Kane. Uh, the message is very timely. It's all about uh, empowering uh, children to cope with anxiety in these anxious times. Working with Mary over the last number of months uh, was a pleasure. Uh, she was so passionate about her subject matter. Uh, from our point of view, the typesetting of this of this book is all about accessibility. It was all about making the points easy for you to follow. Um, Parvati, our designer, did a fabulous job when it comes to the front cover. And in fact, what I really like about this front cover is, is the message of the book is conveyed in, in quite subtle ways. But I'm going to leave you uh, work out that for yourself. Um, anxious Children in an Anxious World by Dr. Mary O'Kane. It's out now and design and publishing uh, by JM Agency. So to finish then, I suppose there's two final people I really should thank. And the first one is Rachel Drury from buythebook.ie for all her support and Jeremy Murphy for his publishing expertise. So thank you so much to the two of you. And I couldn't finish without saying thank you to everybody who's watching this little book launch. Um, I just want to say I appreciate your support so much. I really do. Um, I've been packing all the books. This is why you're a self-published author, because you get to go through all the address emails and you get to pack all the books. I've said, I have a little sweatshop going on here. My, <laughs> my kids are working away, but it's joyful. And I'm looking at your names, guys. All the book orders are coming through and I'm printing labels and I'm looking and I see all these names from my little Facebook community. And I'm looking at the names, I think, oh, this person, oh, that, and she always shares my posts. And I look and I'm, oh, she always likes the funny stuff and this, oh, he always comments on the emotional stuff. I feel like I know you all. I, and I don't know the faces to the names, but I really recognize all the names. And I just want to say thank you so much, not only for all your pre-orders, which I genuinely appreciate. It's nerve wracking putting a book out there into the world. You, you've put your heart and soul into it. This one has been an absolute passion project. So you put everything into it, but then you have to put it out into people and you, you can't help yourself in thinking, are they just gonna be going, oh, you're a woman, she's another book. So I really, really appreciate all the orders and the lovely comments and whatever. And um, so thank you so much to everybody 
in my little social media bubble and everybody who's bought the book as well. And I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs>